a blessed day to each and every one. Again, my name is Jerry April, and we're here for another learning for the models of curriculum development. Let's start. Curriculum in Latin it means a running course. In Scotland, in 1603, it is a carriageway or a road. In the United States, in 1906, it's a course of study. In 1940, it is a plan for learning or for study. What is curriculum? Curriculum is a design plan for learning that requires the purposeful and proactive organization, sequencing and management of the interactions among the teachers, the students, and the content knowledge we want to acquire. Some of the components of a comprehensive curriculum unit includes content, grouping and pacing assessment, differentiation, introduction or closure, teaching strategies, learning activities, resources, extension activities, and products. Characteristics of exemplary curriculum. Motivating introductory experiences. Align assessment strategies and growth criteria, feedback, debriefing, transfer and extension opportunities, interaction and support, challenging and active learning activities, interest-based applications and extensions, authentic resources and products, modifications that attend to powerful student differences. What is a curriculum model? A model is a format for curriculum design developed to meet unique needs and contents and or purposes in order to address these goals. Curriculum developers design, reconfigure, or rearrange one or more key curriculum components, such as resources, products, learning, teaching, intro, content, extension, modification, assessment, and grouping. These are the reasons and rationale for a curriculum model based on student differences. So, why should we differentiate our curriculum? What kinds of students' differences should we address? How will we develop or revise curriculum to address these differences? And what should we expect from the differentiation? We have different models when it comes to development development of curriculum. First, we have the Tyler model. It sought to answer the following questions. What educational purposes should the school seek to attain? What educational experiences can be provided that are likely to attain these purposes? How can these educational experiences be effectively organized? And how can we determine whether these purposes are being attained? The TABA model she argued that there was a definite order in creating a curriculum. She believed that teachers who teach the curriculum shall participate in developing it, which led to the model being called the grassroots approach. The Saylor and Alexander model, Galen Saylor and William Alexander in 1974 viewed curriculum development as a consisting of four steps. According to them, Curriculum is a plan for providing sets of learning opportunities to achieve broad educational goals and related specific objectives for an identifiable population served by a single school center. The development approach in this model proposes that development of typical and atypical children progress in a predictable sequence and that this sequence should be thought to students with disabilities. Point one, first time, we can be wasted working on skill which may never be mastered. Point two, second, not all behaviors in the sequence are necessary for independent functioning, nor are they age appropriate as the child grows well beyond the age that development skill is typically mastered. Point three, finally, the child is viewed as developmentally young. The functional approach. The philosophy of this approach is that the students with severe disabilities need to acquire age, appropriate and functional skills, skill necessary for functioning independently. It reflects higher expectation for students with severe disabilities and promotes opportunities to acquire age appropriate skills. 
The ecological approach reflects characteristics of both the individual student and the environment in which his or her participation is designed. The planning team using the ecological approach to curriculum development devices, an individual curriculum which addresses the skills, activities, and environments most relevant to the student. The curriculum content is ever-changing as the needs of the students change. Subject teacher-centered design. The subject-centered curriculum is based on subject. All knowledge is transferred to students through the subjects. Subject matter is taught should reflect basic areas that are essentials and agreed upon content for learner attainment all in one place. Learner-centered curriculum. In learner-centered curriculum, there is a link between courses and children's psychology. It is according to the interests and tendency of children. It facilitates the mind of children because it fulfills their psychological and mental requirements. The teacher-centered versus learner-centered curriculum. In teacher-centered and the TC and then the learner-centered or LC, TC focuses on instructor, LC focuses on both students and instructor. TC, instructor talks, student listen. LC, instructor models, students interact with instructor and one another. TC, students work alone. LC, students work in pairs, in groups or alone depending on the purpose of the activity. TC, instructor monitors and corrects every student utterance. LC, students talk without content, instructor monitoring. TC, instructor chooses topics. LC, students have some choice of topics. TC, instructor answers students' question about language. LC, student answer each other question using instructor as an information resource. TC, classroom is quiet. LC, classroom is often noisy and busy. TC, instructor evaluates students' learning. LC, student evaluate their own learning. Instructor also evaluates. Integrated curriculum refers to an uncompartmentalized approach in general science learning as opposed to separate subjects such as physics, chemistry, and biology. Hidden curriculum. The message of hidden curriculum may support or contradict each other as well as the written curriculum. For example, while school social studies curriculum typically emphasizes and even celebrates democratic political systems and principles such as one person, one vote, majority rule and minority rights, separation of church and state, equality before the law and due process, these principles are not always practiced in public classrooms and corridors. Collateral curriculum. The collateral curriculum is designed intentionally to offer students the opportunity to learn empowering concepts, principles, and ideas peripheral or outside the subject thought. Though the teacher intends learning outcomes for the collateral curriculum, the knowledge is not specified in instructional objectives nor is it assessed in the sense the collateral curriculum is a plan hidden curriculum. Null curriculum is which is not taught in school. Ace in 994 suggests that what curriculum designers and or teachers choose to live out of the curriculum, the null curriculum sends a covert message about what is to be valued. Spiral curriculum, Brunner in 1960 wrote, a curriculum as it develops shall revisit these basic ideas repeatedly, building upon them until the student has grasped the full formal apparatus that goes with them. So let's all remember that a good curriculum can change the face and fate of the nation. That's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe, click the notification bell button, and hit the thumbs up button for more updates. Thank you and see you next time.